welcome to you are spoilers i am adam you're not hearing things that is the other theme i could not find the file for the video game theme music so here we are with the regular theme music um possibly josie will be on today so we can talk about um what would that be called um uh, Bad Batch Season 1 over on Exploring Hyperspace Lange. If you're not subscribed, it's a pretty fun show. We have that over there. You know, if you go to our website, you can you can listen to it on there. Uh, we have links to all the episodes. Um, in, if you go to the news page, you'll see links with most of the episode information. Today, we are doing, uh, Hogwarts Legacy, though. Which is the kind of thing that I was on the fence about covering to begin with. And I can kind of get into more about that here than I can where I do my text reviews um, because it's, it's all personal. It's it, Here's the issue. J.K. Rowling is not a good person. Um, that said, what other thing, what other things have been said by other companies and how other companies have reacted to and, and made public statements has not impacted what we do on this show in the past. Disney's lack of, you know, like everything that went on with Disney leading up to their eventual coming out, like, fine, we, we don't support the, the Don't Say Gay Bill. All of that doesn't come into place with this. We still cover Warner Brothers movies, even though they've been taking actions to keep up stuff that is created by straight white men while anything that is minority-led or produced is being kind of shafted. Um, and, and even today, Marvel took steps to... We'll talk about it more on, on 30-minute reviews, but Marvel did do something today that was not in the best for a uh, director of color, in the case of Nia DaCosta, who got, I think, a little shafted by this, unless they, unless they know something we don't know. Um, but... That none of that has impacted this before. This did not impact last year the decision making going into cover um, Secrets of Dumbledore, which was co written or entirely written by J.K. Rowling. There was no question about covering that. It was just we're going to cover it because it's something that we can talk about. Um, that said, what J.K. Rowling said and has done, and, and you know what the thing is too. Last year we didn't have all these disclaimers before it. Um, I'm not entirely sure why there was no vitriolic response to Secrets of Dumbledore, which she had a more direct hand in and profited more directly from, um, in where this is just she's getting a licensing royalty, where she got, I would assume, she got WGA rate plus royalties for Secrets of Dumbledore and the other movies on there. Um I'm not 100 percent on that. Don't quote me. I could be. I could be very wrong. But that that's how I would perceive this whole thing. It's just kind of odd that this is the the hill people are dying on. And and I have a theory as to why I'm not going to get into it. Um, I think that what we have here is probably the, you know, the best way to handle this. Because on top of that, too, um, it's not just J.K. Rowling. In fact, it's very little to do with J.K. Rowling. With what happened with this game, um, there are hundreds and hundreds of developers and, and stuff like that. Who, who went into making this at Avalanche and, and all of that, who are employed by Avalanche. Um, this is more about supporting them and what they do. Considering, again, very little. It, it's a very closed mindset to look at this and say, oh, well, it's just about J.K. Rowling. Well, no, there are also hundreds of other people who may not share her worldview who went into working this game and, and worked um, a very long time to make this game happen, considering this game was announced before we even found out what kind of a trash person J.K. Rowling was. Um, but all of that said, I'm not going to get into it anymore. This is more about that, um, more about the developers behind it, as is the case with any video game. We tend to stand with labor on this show more than we stand with the people who are at the top. Um, in this case, the people who are um, licensing off their IP to, to be made into a video game. Um, that said, this game is not perfect. I've been seeing a lot of, and the thing is too, there's a lot of little nitpicky things that kind of happened with this game in the immediate lead up to its release that kind of didn't make it the 
make the release go as smoothly as possible, if we want to put it that way. Like, for example, like, I think not giving Kotaku a review code does raise a good amount of concern regarding PR at Warner Brothers and this. And I think that one of the things worth addressing is that Warner Brothers PR does handle these games. Um, it's Warner Brothers games, but it's still Warner Brothers PR who's going to have a say in all of this. Um, and the fact that they're not giving review codes in advance to what is, you may not agree with them politically, but what is ostensibly a, a newspaper of record for the games industry is a little suspect, considering it, it, it does come down to a lot of, like, political leaning. And then it's like, they also wouldn't give it to, like, Game Informer, which tends to be more strictly on the merits of the game, not on the IP, and, and stuff like that. So it was one of the things where, like, leading up to what you had that, which did influence me going into this, because I was kind of sitting there like, what are they trying to keep from people in advance of release? Because that's where it first goes to, is because the review embargo is the day before the digital da the digital deluxe edition goes, goes live. And then on top of that, you cherry-picked which sources would get it in advance, which would be people who would look on it favorably based on the fact that it's Harry Potter. And it's like, all right, I, I see what you're doing. You're looking at, like, I'm thinking that the game's going to be a buggy mess. Like, my first thought was they saw what happened with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and they were like, let's handpick people who will give this a good review and be willing to overlook bugs in favor of just giving us a positive score. Whatever they didn't, you know. And, and, and to the game's credit, I didn't find a ton of bugs when I was playing it. I wasn't also actively looking, um, but I, I there there are things I like I like about this game and things I don't like, and I think that's the case with a lot of these games. I like the you know the amount of immersion that the game has. I do love the um, looking at all of the like you know getting to visit Hogwarts and and walk around and you know do magic and all of that, and they handle that all of that pretty well. Um, the story is kind of a weak point for me, and I think that that is kind of to the detriment of the game. I'm not a huge fan of the plot. I'd rather they kind of just got rid of the plot altogether, to be completely honest, and just had you be a student and just live through a normal year at Hogwarts and not have it be, oh, well, you're a student and there's this earth-ending like cataclysm that you need to be involved with to to stop it from destroying, you know, the wizarding world and it, it, like there's a whole big thing that like you can you can do without a lot of that. I don't need any of that in this game. Um, but whatever they they do what they do, and there's nothing we can do to stop them. And I feel like that's kind of to the detriment. Is that I'd rather just be allowed to explore freely and not have to worry about that. Um, there's some weird things like uh, I got to a a mission in the game, but it wasn't the right time of day, so my character just decided to lay down on the floor in the office and sleep until it came time for it to, for that mission to happen, which is kind of a weird choice. I would have like it, it, like the, the hills they, they decided to die on with this game were kind of weird where it's like, well, why wouldn't you just have it where the mission can happen any time of day? Why does it need to be bound to the day night cycle? Meanwhile, on the other side of things, you have things like there's no morality system, which is a little weird, especially considering you're introducing unforgivable curses, like, the ability to straight-up murder another student just with, you know, magic. And I didn't I, I didn't try it on the student to know if it'll work or not. Because, um, you know, you don't... I, I'm one of the people who won't do bad things in the video game because I feel bad about doing it um, in this situation. Like, Grand Theft Auto is different. You're playing someone who will go on sociopathic killing spree, so that's different. But, like, here, it's like... It, it, it feels weird for me to do that, so I didn't do it. Um, but to introduce these kind of, this kind of magic and not have there be some kind of morality system feels like a, a missed opportunity for me. I'm not entirely sure why you wouldn't do that, especially considering games like Fable, you know, I'm thinking Fable 3, um, back in like 07, maybe 010, maybe, oh, 010, maybe 2010, um, you have Fable 3 have it where your character's, you know, body like physically changes with the choices you make. And then there are games like Infamous where, your powers change based on your, you know, your 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 alignment, good or evil, and and it's things like that that like these are decade old games, and they're doing things that this game doesn't do. Even small things like look at Watch Dogs, where it's like you can see everything about them. So if you decide to run the information to find out things about people, and then you just go around and just kill people with active warrants, like the the radio will be like, well, he's 
kind of, you know, not the worst killer. Like, there's a serial killer, but the serial killer is only targeting, you know, criminals. So, like, how do we handle this? Like, it can recognize a gray morality in that game, but not in... It, 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 like, this game can't do it. This game's, like, ten years later. It's been in development for as long as it has. Um, it feels like a strange situation altogether. Um, looking at... What's it called? Looking at, like, um... What's the one for here? Like, uh... The wider kind of... Expanse of... What this game does in terms of magic. The cooldowns can get a little annoying. I understand cooldowns from a perspective of... Combat. Like, you don't want people to be able to spam... In, um... In a combat situation. Because then it just gets... You know, it, it could upset the fight. Which, at that point, like... You understand, because, like, you don't want to have it be, like, oh, well, we can just use the killing curse, now there's no, like, there's no fight at all. Um, and considering there's no morality reason to not use the killing curse in battle, there's no reason not to do it. Um, I'm, I'm kind of just, like, I'm not entirely sure what, like, I understand from that perspective. But also, a lot of the spells um, also have environmental uses um, for exploration and for puzzle solving. Um, and the, what's it called? The cooldown does exist for those things. And there have been times where I tried to, like, Incendio is the easiest one, which, which creates fire. Um, there are things that you use it on, and you have to, uh, and, and it'll give you a page in the, in the guide for how to traverse the school. Because in this game, you're a fifth year who's going to Hogwarts for the first time, and, uh, hijinks ensue. And... So, like, as a part of it, like, they give you a guidebook of, like, all of the shit you need to know for, um, what's it called? All the shit you need to know for, uh, um, like, like, for navigating the school. But instead of giving it to you, and just being, like, here's a guidebook, it's, you have to go out and collect all the pages, and then you get XP, XP for collecting all the pages. It's just kind of a weird system all around, and, and I don't think the narrative really supports it, which isn't the biggest deal on the planet, it's just kind of weird. Um, but, like, the, the cooldown spells does have a little bit of a, an issue where it's, like, I understand it from a combat standpoint, but if you go to use it and you aren't lined up properly and you miss, you gotta sit there and wait for the thing to refill and then you can use it again, and it's like, alright, I gotta stand here and wait for this thing to, to, the cooldown to happen. Um, crafting systems is another thing that I'm tired of being in every game. Um, crafting systems and parrying, which this game has both. Um, I don't necessarily need a parry system in every fucking game I play um, to, to stun an enemy and open up uh, uh, ability to attack. Look, I understand Dark Souls is big, and people love the combat in Dark Souls. Um, I don't need every fucking game to have it be like that, though. Uh, similarly, I don't need, you know, like I said, I don't need a crafting system in every game. Like, there are plenty of games where... Like this one, like I understand potions and all of that, but these little other crafting bullshit things, I'm like, I don't, I don't need this. Uh, like the herbology crap. It feels like what happened was there were systems that they had kind of tried to use in the phone game that was like Pokemon Go. And you can see that too, where if you play the Pokemon Go um, style game, Wizards Unite it was called, um, like I did. You'll recognize that, like, when you're learning magic, the, the 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 symbols you have to make with the with the controller match the what's it called? Match the same symbols from that game, and I feel like that's what this is. Is it's we're carrying over mechanics from that, but this game doesn't need those mechanics. I, I don't think necessarily we need to have these mechanics built into this game, and uh, that that is to the detriment of the game too a little bit. Um, I also don't understand why there's so much paid extra DLC for this game. Why is there paid PlayStation exclusive spells uh, and, and stuff like that? Why there's a Dark Arts pack for 20 bucks that I didn't bother to buy? Like, I'm not paying an extra $20 on top of the price of the game to get the rest of the game. It feels a little weird. And, like, if you want to call the game out for something, that's something I haven't been I haven't seen called out. And I think that part of it comes from this, this vitriolic kind of hatred that this game's been getting to the point where journalists don't want to cover it. Because I heard from, I, like, the uh, there are, the person who did that IGN is not the person who would normally do this style game. It was, like, their games-as-a-service guy. 
and it was because the other people didn't want to deal with the backlash of covering this game, which is like, look, that I, I don't, I don't subscribe to, you know, to, to any of that. And and look, what we have here is we have a game that is doing DLC in the worst possible way for a single player game, and it's it's not being called out because the journalists are too afraid to talk about the game. Uh, the journalists within the gaming space are too afraid to talk about the game out of fear of backlash, and it's like, all right, whatever. I just don't understand why, you know, like that, that, there is a problem to be addressed here. It's just not being addressed because of the situation it's in, which is going to ultimately possibly hinder the game in, the game's industry going forward. If people do, I don't know the stats or anything, but people do out, go out and buy this DLC, it will send the wrong message to developers about making this kind of DLC in the future. Um, what else was there? Um, the RPG elements do work. I do like the, um, the, the system for getting additional, um, like getting, pa like getting additional wardrobe and how it actually does impact how you look and all of that. I do appreciate all of that. Um, locking it behind exploration is a great idea. And I think that that's something that's, that's good. You don't have a conventional kind of open world thing like you do in, um, in other games where you have to get to the top of a tower or something like that to do it. It feels like the exploration does kind of come naturally in this game. Um, my only concern is uh, too much of Hogwarts is labyrinthian, and it does get a little bit difficult to traverse, and it does get a little confusing at times um, as you're trying to get through the castle and, and look around and explore, considering how many of the hallways just look so similar and you just kind of get lost at times. Um, and then it's like, unless you're going on a mission and you have something specific you're going to do, you're, you're going to get lost in this game. You're going to get lost. And, and that is cumbersome, to say the least. What else have we got? Um, oh, the spell. I didn't talk about the spells. Like, there's such a wide variety of spells, and I think that if I have a concern about it, it's that they, the button mapping could be better with it. Considering you use right trigger to do a basic cast, um, which is just like a basic attack uh, cast, um... And then you hold right trigger and press various buttons on the direction, on, not the directional pad, the AB, uh, ABXY. I played it with on my PC with an Xbox controller. You use that, and it'll use other spells like Lumos and Defendo and you know all the other kind of spells that you would use for this kind of thing. The fact that that's mapped that way does kind of get annoying because of how wide the range of spells is. And the weird thing is they're color coded too. So I don't know why you wouldn't just have it where there's an easier way to cycle. Like, if you hold right trigger and press the directional buttons, that would do it. Like, I feel like that would be a better way to do it. Or hold the right trigger and then press, like, I don't know. I feel like there's definitely a better way to handle it. Because um, then it's like, you have to sit there. Luckily, you don't, you know, like, when you when you do go to change spells, it does kind of freeze time. So you're not, you know, if you do it, if you decide to do it in combat like a sociopath, you can, you know, you have time to change things. But, oh, without getting killed, but whatever. The game is easy enough where you're not going to be in any real risk of, of dying. I mean, it's not a difficult game in terms of difficulty. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so Hogwarts Legacy is now out on, um, on Xbox Series X, PS5, and PC. If you want to play it on your previous-gen consoles, you have to wait till April. If you want to play it on the Switch which is going to have cloud-based gaming as part of it, you'll have to wait until, um, what's it called? Until, uh, July, end of July, because fucking why not? Um, if you are listening to this today, it goes up tomorrow. We'll be doing our discussion of the top five, of the five nominees for best animated. I think tomorrow's best animated. Yes, yeah, tomorrow is animated. And then on Saturday, Sunday, we'll be doing the live-action short films that were nominated at the Academy Awards this year. Next week, we'll be doing Emily. Hmm, I have to phrase that better. We'll be reviewing the movie Emily next week as well as continuing our regularly scheduled reviews of shows as they happen. Um, we also might be doing Tales of Symphonia next week. It'll depend on if I can get a copy of the game this weekend because uh, I do have things to do. Uh, it is a very hectic time, and we'll have all of that. If you tune in this week on 30 Minute Reviews, we'll be talking about Akira, and possibly we'll be having our episode about the Bad Batch um, for Exploring Hyperspace Lanes coming up at some point this uh, on Wednesday. Uh, we will, you know, me and Joe are trying to work it out. Um, she is 
they do with work. So with all of that, um, until our next episode, have a great rest of your week.